Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video on Gran Turismo 7. I'm back with another track guide, this time we're at Daily Race B at Watkins Glen in Group 4, driving on the racing hard tyres with BOP on and default setup. So, for this guide we're using the Nissan GTR. I'm not a massive fan of all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive cars, not my kind of handling. However, once I got used to this, it didn't take me very long. I had a little 10 minutes, literally before I went live yesterday, managed to get about four or five laps in, in time trial and actually hit quite a good lap. So I recorded it, saved it, and decided to get it out as a track guide for you lot because it was a reasonably solid lap. Hopefully it'll help you out. Hopefully it'll find you some time on this track. There is a few very important pointers I'm gonna point out in this guide that can help you find a massive amount of time at this track. So make sure you watch it. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel. Let's get on with this guide and try and find you as much possible time we can at Watkins Glen in group four. So let's start obviously from the final corner. We're going to be trying to make sure we carry as much speed through here as possible. Now, the one thing I will say is I think if you start a second lap, you might be able to carry a little bit more speed because you start not going the optimal speed at the start there. So you maybe gain half a tenth there, maybe factor that in. So going down into turn one, we're going to be looking for the 200 board on the left-hand side there. You're going to break just short of that 200 board, just a fraction of a bit before it. Now that's going to give you the time to slow down the car, get it into third gear and rotate it in. Now one thing with this car is it's so important with the braking, how you do it. You can see aggressive on the brakes, then shift late, later shifting with this car and then turn it in. You can see you can get your car all the way over the curb. This four-wheel drive car is so stable right hand tire on it and you can get so early on the throttle super early on the throttle use the full width of the track there that's so important as well for maintaining your speed on the exit here because if you don't do that there you're going to lose a tenth or more by the time you get to first the first sector split so make sure you use the full track width on acceleration you, you know utilizing the full width of the track and will gain you so much time on this straight it may sound silly but yeah you can gain over a tenth by doing that now this is where you're going to gain so much time in the bus stops you came Using the 300 board as a reference, that is where I'm going to pretty much use as a reference for my braking. We're going to just get on the brakes just as we're almost level with that. You can see the braking input's going in here. And we're going to stay in fifth gear quite late. You can see staying in fifth gear and we're aiming to go right over that curb on the right side. Just be careful of glitch curbs because, you know, it's Watkins Glen. There's a lot of them here. And just before we hit the curb, we're going down to fourth gear. You can see, and we're going back on the throttle. You see that throttle input, then back off it. Tiny bit of braking input in, just as we're going into the next part of the chicane. Now, this is braking input's going to be very minor. Back off, and we're coasting out at this point. Now, look at this. As we come here, look at the ghost in front. You want to get your right-hand tire onto the grass. What this does is it kind of rotates the car into the next corner and helps you carry more speed. Maybe you should stay on that throttle that little bit longer and you can then carry more speed on the exit. You can see a tiny bit of braking input going in mid to apex. That's not optimal, but it can help with rotation. So facts that, you know, if you feel you need to do it, you can do it as long as you get back on that throttle nice and early. Use the curb on the left for full exit speed. Now we're looking for the 200 board on the right hand side. You can see it there, 200 board. We're on the brakes dead level with that 200 board. You can see it's clear as day on the screen. Now, downshift to fourth gear, and again, we're gonna go very, very tight to this apex. You can see, from the middle of the line, you can actually see the tarmac where we're doing the line through the corner. Third gear through here, on the throttle super early again. On that throttle so early with this car because of the grip from the rear tyres. And just be careful you don't understand steer wide. Up shift to fourth gear. And now we're going into this tricky right-hand corner. Just be careful the car doesn't slide too much in the braking here. We're braking just short of the 100 board. You can see it there or the Gran Turismo 7 board, whichever one you fancy to use. Um, make sure you brake a bit before though so that you can rotate the car in. So down to fourth gear, then to third gear and then try and get on that power super early. You really want to get the car hooking the curb on the right side like the P1 Ghost did there. If you do that, you're going to gain another tenth or two over what I've done here, but I just wanted to give you a very basic guide. So yeah, powering our way down this straight now into the next braking zone. Now we're going to be looking for braking in between the 200 and the 100. So you see the 200 board there, we're braking just in between that and the 100 board. A little bit earlier, if anything, a little bit closer to the 200 board, just to enable you to rotate the car into this right-hand corner. So down to third gear, do not go into second gear for this corner, stay in third gear, let the car coast in, and you can see trail braking, trail braking, trail braking, off the trail braking, then on that throttle as soon as that right-hand tire is touching that curb almost, and staying on that power all the way to the exit. Just be careful you don't run all the way wide, just about manage to stay in the track limits there. Now we use a 100 board for our reference, braking just short of that 100 board. And again, this corner, hold that gear down to third gear and just stay in third gear through here. Just lift off the throttle, just play with that throttle until you feel confident. Then on the throttle aggressively, you can see 
powering our way out of this exit. It's so important again to get a good exit off that corner. You can gain another tenth or two there if you're really aggressive. Now for this left-hand corner, this is all about chucking the car in at speed, using the 100 board basically as a reference just to dab the brake. We're not going to go aggressive on the brake. Just look at the minor input of braking in there. That's just to get the weight onto the front of the car. And then aggressive on the throttle, staying on that throttle all the way. Use the kerb on the right side and now into this final right-hand corner. And again, this corner is... Again, a corner where you can gain so much time. Using that sign on the left as kind of a braking input. You can see it on the left-hand side there. Braking nice and early. Stay in fourth gear. Do not go into third gear. Stay in fourth gear and try and get on that throttle as early as you can. The earlier you get on it, the more speed you carry out this exit. Just run the car almost all the way up to the barrier. Just be careful not to hit the barrier, obviously. And over the line for a 1 minute 53.4 dead. Now, I was pretty happy with that. You can see I was on a 53.8. I only did a few laps and managed to just improve massively. So I'm sure... I'm pretty sure if I really went aggressive on this, we could get into the 1 minute 52s, 0.9s or something like that. Because I actually quite like this Nissan round here. It's quite kind of strange. But yeah, again, watching it again on this cam, you see how we're really using that full track width there. That enables you to carry more speed all the way up this uphill section and gain you so much time all the way into the bus stops you're going. And we're going to see again how you get that right-hand tyre onto the grass, which helps with the rotation. Now, just be careful on these curbs at Watkins Glen. There's so many glitch curbs on this chicane. It's quite crazy. The car can just instantly spin if you hit them. Like there, we did that perfect, but sometimes it will just spin you out. You see, using that grass there, you can actually see the rotation as you do it, and you can see how it hugs you into this curb better. And then that enables you to get on the throttle earlier for this exit, which is gonna gain you even more time. So trust me, that corner there, that is two to three times gained if you get it right just on the bus stop chicane. Now, power, power on our way out, use the kerb. A lot of using the kerbs and using the full width of the track. You're going to see here, though, could have got the curb car into the kerb a little bit better into the apex. You see, kind of in the middle of the track. It would have been a little bit nicer to skim the apex and get on that throttle a little bit earlier. Probably would have gained ourselves a tenth or two there. But overall, not too bad. Now into the next braking zone. Again, you see braking in between the 200 and the 100 board there. Again, skimming that curb on the right-hand side, on the throttle as soon as you can, and just be careful you don't run too. You've got to keep your right-hand tire touching the curb. If you go past the curb with the right-hand tire, that's a penalty. Factor that in when you're doing this lap. Remember that you can pick up a penalty there. And then into this final section, it's all about carrying speed through fast corners. You see here, just a tiny dab of that brake, hardly anything. Back on the throttle, use the full width for the track. And again, for this corner, that sign on the left, use it as a reference, chuck the car in, and then carry the speed all the way to the barrier and then all the way to the finishing line. Hopefully this will help you out. Let me know in the comment section if it's managed to improve your time. Let me know if it's helped you out in the race as well. Hopefully it will do and hopefully it'll help increase your DR. I'll be back with more of these guides and more live streams in the future. Thanks again for watching everyone.